Hey, this is Presh Talwalker. A circle with radius 1 is tangent to two points of the parabola y equals x squared. What is the area between the circle and the parabola? Here's a diagram to illustrate the problem. We have the parabola y equals x squared, and then we have a circle of radius 1 that's tangent to the parabola at two points. The question is what's the area that's highlighted in red in between the circle and the parabola? I want to thank Chad Bacciolo for sending me this puzzle. Can you figure it out? Give this problem a try, and when you're ready, keep watching the video for the solution. I'll proceed to find the answer in a series of three steps. We'll first determine the center of the circle. Then we'll find the intersection points between the circle and the parabola. We'll then calculate the area in two different ways. We'll first find the area using addition and subtraction of simple shapes. We'll then also solve it using an integral. So let's proceed by finding the center of the circle. You can experiment with where the circle could be. Once you try and figure out where the circle could be, you'll come to the conclusion the circle has to be in a particular position. To be tangent at two points, the circle has to be above the parabola. Its center also has to be on the line x equals 0, which means the center of the circle has to be a point of the form 0 comma b. So what's the value of b? The circle's radius of 1 has to be the minimal distance from the center of the circle to the parabola. So we can attempt to solve for b by solving a minimization problem. We'll minimize the distance between the center of the circle to the parabola. A point on the parabola y equals x squared will have a form x comma x squared. Using the distance formula, we want to minimize the following function. But before we do that, we can use a little trick. Since distance is non-negative, it will be easier to minimize the distance squared. This will allow us to get rid of the square root, so it'll be easier for us to take the derivative and find the correct value of b. So let's do this. We'll find the critical values by solving for where the derivative equals 0. We end up with the following equation. We then factor out 2x, and we need to solve this equation for where x leads it to be equal to 0. There are two possibilities. One is that 2x could equal 0. This would mean x would equal 0. We now take this value and substitute it back into our distance squared function. This means the distance squared will be equal to b squared. And notice the distance from the center of the circle to the parabola, which will be also on the circle. This has to be equal to the radius squared of the circle. And we know the circle has a radius of 1, so this means b squared has to be equal to 1. This leads to two possible values b equals plus 1 or b equals minus 1. Could these be the possible center of the circle? No. A circle centered at either 0, 1 or 0, negative 1 will not be tangent at two points of the parabola. We can see this geometrically. A circle centered at 0, negative 1 will be tangent only at the origin. And then a circle centered at 0, 1 will be tangent also at the origin, but it will also touch the parabola at two other points, 1, 1 and negative 1, 1. So these are not possible solutions for our circle being tangent to the parabola at exactly two points. So we then consider the other possibility. What if 1 plus 2 times the quantity x squared minus b equals 0? We can solve this equation to get that x squared equals b minus 1 half. Once again, we substitute into the distance squared function. And this leads to the equation that the distance squared is equal to b minus 1 fourth, which equals the radius squared, which equals 1. Therefore, 
B is equal to 5 fourths. When we tried that, it turns out to be a sensible solution, and this in fact is the center of the circle. Now we need to find the intersection points between the circle and the parabola. We have a circle of radius 1 that's centered at 0, 5 fourths. This circle will have an equation x squared plus the quantity y minus 5 fourths squared equals 1. Where will this intersect the parabola where y equals x squared? We can solve this system of equations. We'll substitute in y equals x squared into the first equation. So we have y plus the quantity y minus 5 fourths squared is equal to 1. After a little bit of simplification, we get that y minus 3 fourths, the quantity squared, is equal to 0. And therefore, y is equal to 3 fourths. y equals x squared, so we get that x is equal to negative square root of 3 over 2, or x is equal to positive square root of 3 over 2. So we found our two intersection points. We now need to solve for the area. So let's set up a little bit of diagram using our values of the intersection points. The red area can be found by addition and subtraction of a few simple shapes. We'll set up that the red area is equal to the area of this entire rectangle minus the portions which do not belong to the red area. So we'll subtract the area underneath the parabola. And then we need to subtract the area that's above the circle. This will be a circular segment. So what's the area of this circular segment? Well, we need to solve for it using the areas of shapes that we can calculate easily. So this circular segment can be calculated as follows. We take the circular sector originating from the center of the circle, and then we'll subtract out this isosceles triangle from the circular sector. So this circular segment is equal to the area of the circular sector minus the area of this triangle. So we'll substitute that in for the circular segment, and now we can simplify that our red area is equal to the area of the rectangle minus the area under the parabola minus the area of the circular sector plus the area of this triangle. So let's calculate for the area of each of these shapes. The rectangle has a length of square root of 3 and a height of 3 fourths. So its area will be 3 fourths the square root of 3. The area under the parabola can be found using the integral of x squared from negative th square root of 3 over 2 to positive square root of 3 over 2. This is standard calculation. We end up with square root of 3 over 4. Now the area of the circular sector and the triangle will, will require a little bit of geometry. So let's draw this triangle again. We know that its radius is equal to 1 because that's the radius of the circle. So that's one length of the triangle. What are the other lengths? Well, the height will be 5 fourths minus 3 fourths, so that's 1 half. Finally, the base will have two segments of square root of 3 over 2. Now look at the lengths of this triangle. We have a triangle with lengths square root of 3 over 2, 1 half, and 1. This is the lengths of a special triangle. Each half of this triangle is a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, or in radians, the angles are pi over 6, pi over 3, and pi over 2. So we know that this particular angle is pi over 3, or 60 degrees, and this angle is also the same. So now we know the central angle of this sector. The central angle is 2 pi over 3. This circular sector has a radius of 1, and the area of the circular sector is 1 half times r squared theta. We substitute in our values, and we get the area of the circular sector is pi over 3. 
Now we solve for the area of this triangle. It is a base of square root of 3 and a height of 1 half. We use the formula for the area of a triangle and substitute in these values to get this area is square root of 3 over 4. So now we calculate the area of the red segment using what we just calculated. We can cancel out the area under the parabola with the area of the triangle. It actually turns out those are both equal to the same value. It's kind of an interesting little piece of trivia. So now we have the area of this red segment is equal to 3 fourths square root of 3 minus pi over 3. And that's approximately equal to 0.2518. And that's our answer. So this is one way to approach the problem, but we could have also approached it using an integral. Remember the circle is given by the following equation. We'll now solve for the lower half of this circle by taking the negative square root of that equation. So the lower half of the circle is given by the equation 5 fourths minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. We want to solve for the area between this curve and the parabola, which is x squared. So we can set up a single integral, which is the difference between the lower half of the circle and the parabola y equals x squared. And we compute that integral between negative square root of 3 over 2 and positive square root of 3 over 2. This will also give us the area. So how do we calculate this integral? We can break it down into three different terms. It will be easier to calculate some of these as separate integrals. So we'll break it off into three different integrals. The first integral is straightforward to calculate, and the last integral is also straightforward to calculate. So we have 10 square root of 3 over 8 minus 2 square root of 3 over 8, which simplifies to be square root of 3. So our ultimate answer will be square root of 3 minus this one somewhat complicated integral. So how can we evaluate this integral? This is a textbook example for using a trig substitution, x equals sine theta. This means dx is equal to cosine theta d theta. And if the x values go between negative square root of 3 over 2 and positive square root of 3 over 2, that means theta will go between negative pi over 3 and positive pi over 3. So we do this trig substitution, and now we can simplify this integral. We use some trigonometric identities, and then we end up with the integral of the cosine square root of theta. This is also a standard thing to evaluate. So we then evaluate this integral, and we end up that the answer is the same as before, 3 fourths the square root of 3 minus pi over 3. Did you figure it out? Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I make videos on math. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions. If you like this video, you can support me on Patreon, and you can check out my books, which are listed in the video description. You can also catch me on social media, either at Presh Hallwalker or at Mind Your Decisions, depending on the site.